We've seen how the cardiac depolarization and repolarization waves spread through the heart. Now we will go on to explain how these electrical events are analyzed by the ECG leads to produce the waveforms of the ECG readout. Again, we will work with the 2D schematic of the heart as explained in video one of this section. The leads of the ECG machine detect the movement of the cardiac depolarization and repolarization waves as they spread through the atria and ventricles. Leads capable of detecting electrical signal are placed on the patient's body and the different lead positions record the flow of current through the heart from different perspectives. In this way, the ECG recording can give us information about disease processes affecting different anatomical regions of the organ. We'll see how this works later, but for now we need to understand how the individual ECG leads analyze and record cardiac current. In any ECG lead, the flat line recorded on the readout when no net current is flowing is termed the isoelectric line. It is very important to realize that all of the ECG leads on the ECG machine are set up in such a way that depolarizing current moving towards a lead produces a deflection on the ECG paper above the isoelectric line, a positive deflection, while depolarizing current moving away from the lead produces a deflection below the isoelectric line, a negative deflection. In contrast, repolarizing current has the opposite polarity to depolarizing current. Therefore, repolarizing current moving towards a lead produces a negative deflection on the paper, while repolarizing current moving away from the lead produces a positive deflection. As the depolarization and repolarization waves spread over the normal heart in a well-defined and relatively constant pattern, these rules mean that if we know the position of an ECG lead relative to the heart, we can predict the form of readout it records. We'll come back to the nomenclature and position of all 12 leads later, but for now, let's see how this works in two of the six so-called chest leads, V1 and V6. Lead V1 is placed on the anterior surface of the patient's chest in the fourth right intercostal space to the right of the sternum, and therefore to the right of the bulk of the ventricles. In contrast, lead V6 is placed on the patient's chest in the fifth intercostal space, mid-axillary line, and looks at the heart from the left of the ventricles. During each cardiac cycle, atrial contraction is associated with a wave of depolarization spreading over the chambers. As the atria sit at the back of the chest cavity, this wave of depolarization is not only spreading downwards and towards the left from the SA node, but also outwards toward the front of the chest and therefore towards the chest leads. As this depolarizing current is moving towards the leads, it produces a positive deflection on the ECG paper. This is the P wave of atrial depolarization. After a short delay in which no current is flowing, the AV node allows the depolarization signal to travel into the ventricles. As we've seen, the mid-zone of the interventricular septum is the first piece of ventricular muscle to depolarize, and it does so by signal spreading across the septum from the left towards the right bundle branch. This early depolarization signal is moving towards V1 and therefore produces a positive deflection on the ECG paper in the recording from this lead. However, this septal current is moving away from lead V6, producing an initial negative deflection in this lead. As the septum continues to depolarize, the depolarization wave spreads out over the muscle mass of the ventricles. To understand what happens next in the recordings, it is important to realize that the magnitude of the electrical signal generated by depolarizing muscle is directly proportional to the mass of muscle generating it. What this means is that the more muscle present, the more electrical signal generated and the more signal the ECG machine detects. The left ventricle has a much greater muscle mass than the right and so dominates the electrical signal of ventricular depolarization in all leads. Therefore, as the wave of electrical activity reaches the main muscle mass of the ventricles, the left ventricular signal overwhelms all other signals and as it is moving away from V1, the deflection produced on the ECG recording from this lead becomes negative. 
In contrast, however, this signal is moving towards lead V6, producing a strong positive deflection. The flow of depolarizing current around the ventricles is recorded as the QRS complex, and as we've just seen, the morphology of the QRS complex differs predictably in the ECG leads, depending on their position relative to the heart. We'll come back to the precise nomenclature of the QRS complex later. When ventricular depolarization is complete, there is a brief period when no current is flowing and the recording returns to the isoelectric line. This period ends with the onset of ventricular repolarization. Remember, repolarizing current has the opposite polarity to the depolarization wave and therefore when it is moving towards a lead it produces a negative deflection on the ECG paper and a positive deflection when moving away from a lead. We've already seen that repolarization spreads through the ventricles in the opposite direction to the depolarization wave beginning in the epicardium and spreading from the epicardial to the endocardial surface of the ventricles. The deflection produced on an ECG by ventricular repolarization is again dominated by the signal from the left ventricle. As this repolarizing current is moving towards V1, the deflection produced is negative in this lead. In contrast, this repolarizing signal is moving away from lead V6, producing a positive deflection. The deflection produced by ventricular repolarization is termed a T wave. Note that the T wave has a very different morphology to the QRS complex. Cardiac repolarization spreads relatively slowly through the muscle mass outside the conducting system. Hence, the T wave is considerably longer in duration and therefore broader on the ECG paper compared to the QRS complex. You should also realize at this point that the fact that repolarizing current moves through the ventricles in the opposite direction to the depolarization wave means that in leads with an overall negative QRS complex, that is the negative deflection is larger than the positive deflection, the T wave also tends to be negative, lying below the isoelectric line. While in leads with an overall positive QRS complex, the T waves are also positive lying above the isoelectric line. To use the jargon, in non-diseased hearts the QRS complexes and T waves tend to be concordant. There are important exceptions to this rule which we will deal with shortly. Just to tie up a loose end, atrial repolarization produces a relatively weak electrical signal which is buried in the QRS complex and is generally not detectable on a standard 12 lead ECG. In the next video, we will try and ensure that you are familiar with the nomenclature of the ECG recording.